Welcome to the Blitz Show. I'm your host, Mark Thompson, voice of the Brookings Blizzard, our weekly podcast. Getting you caught up with the Brookings Blizzard. We'll be going over their games against the Aberdeen Wings this past weekend. We'll preview Wednesday night's game against the Bismarck Bobcats. We'll talk with Coach Dan Dayakawa and go over the Central Division standings in the North American Hockey League. Let's start with Friday night, a big 5-0 victory for the Brookings Blizzard. Zach Alenke started skating with Bo Michaud and Joe Anderson as Coach Dayakawa put those three together this weekend and uh, paid dividends early on in that first period. He scored on the backhand in the slot, giving the Blizzard a 1-0 lead. Give the backhand shot, just missed the net. Pope at the left point. Down low to Galinke, Galinke in the slot. Backhand shot, he Galinke puts the Blizzard on top. A minute and a half into the game. No scoring throughout the rest of that first period. No scoring in the second period. 1-0 heading into the third. Brookings' Jared Gaudreau gave him a 2-0 lead. That's Jared's first of the season and his first game back for the Blizzard. Thank you. Back to Gaudreau at center. Here's Jared Gaudreau. Gets by the wing defense. Right face off dot. Right a little centering pass. Oh, the wrap right again. Tyler Frischman then put the Blizzard up 3-0 on a nice pass from Ryan Sete from the left hash. Tyler was open in the slot, and he buried it low glove side for a 3-0 Brookings lead. Frischman wins the draw for the Blizzard. Sete, left hash mark. Sete into the slot. Frischman with the shot. He scores! Tyler Frischman and the Blizzard are up 4-0. Bo Mashad, the leading scorer of the team, kept it rolling with his ninth of the season on an assist from Zach Galinke, making it 4 0. The Larson Ice Center was rocking and rolling in that third period. Backhand pass to Galinke. Galinke across the wing line, into the slot, drop pass for Mashad. Bo Mashad shoots it! Bo Mashad from Zach Galinke in the book, and that'll 3 0 lead. In the period, Joe Nathy put the exclamation point on the game as he scored in the final two minutes on a nice pass from Bo Mashad as Nathy scored his third of the season. Galinke races through center, left wing pass to Bo Mashad. Rick right into the slot, Nathy with a shot! He scores! Joe Nathy, second goal of the year, the Blizzard lead 5 to nothing. Of the season. Big 5 nothing victory Friday night. Ryan Kubik from St. Andrew, Manitoba. First game as a blizzard in between the pipes, stopped all 23 shots for the shutout. Saturday night, Brookings heads out on the road to take on the Aberdeen Wings to complete the home and home series. They got off to a great start as Eddie Eade scored his first of the season, a minute 59 into the first period. A shot from the right point off a face-off win. Things even out in the first period after that though, as Aberdeen and Brookings went back and forth. Aberdeen got a late goal by Austin Swingle. Wide open in the slot, put one under the bar, game tied at one after two periods. Aberdeen came out flying in the second period, scoring two quick ones, going up three to one, but Brookings' Joe Anderson gave the Blizzard a little life as he scored from a nice shot in the slot. Blizzard down by one, heading into the third period. Joe Anderson scored again early third to tie the game at three on another nice pass from Bo Mashad. And then Connor Hutchins gave the Blizzard a 4-3 lead on his nice goal, cutting into the slot, using the defenseman as a screen. And Brookings is up a goal just like that early third period. It went on with that same score, three to two, through the most of that third period, heading down the stretch. Brookings still with a one goal lead, but in the final minute, things took a turn for the worse for the Blizzard as uh, a turnover down low, wide open Michael Soucier in the slot for the Aberdeen Wings, ties the game with 50 seconds left, and they go on to win the game in a shootout. Dan Diakow, head coach of the Brookings Blizzard, on the Blizz Show, going over last week's games against the Aberdeen Wings. Coach, let's talk about Friday night's victory. 5 nothing. team looked great uh, right away, right off the bat. Zach Glinke scores on a nice backhand shot, shot from the slot. Uh, tell us about Zach's goal and your team's quick start. Well, obviously, he, he shoots the puck a ton, and so even on the backhand, uh, you know, he put it up under the bar. And for us, you know, obviously, we keep continuing to talk about fast starts, so we're super excited that, uh, you know, we – we were on the board, you know, right away, and, and uh, we went from there. So Zach got his 10th of the season, put the blizzard up, 
You went back and forth in that first period. I mean, you really dominated in shots. It was, I believe it was 11 to 1 at one point. Um, would have been nice to get another one in, but uh, you go into the locker room up one nothing. Um, no goals in that second period. Third period, you really poured it on. Jared Gaudreau comes out, first game back uh, for the Blizzard, and uh, got a hard-working goal. He brought that puck all the way up the ice and uh, beat Shortridge on the short side. Tell us about Jared's goal. Well, it was just a really hard-working goal. Jared uh, was driving driving wide and, and put the puck uh, on that, which we, we talk about a lot. And uh, it, it was sitting there, and, and he banged it home. It was a huge goal, huge timing for us. And obviously, it's nice for him to uh, you know to get a goal his first game back. So you've been clinging to that one goal lead, uh, you know, much of the game, and now you're up two nothing early third period. Tyler Frischman on a nice little pass from Ryan Sete, open in the slot, off the faceoff, and he beats Shortridge low on the glove side. Tell us about Tyler's goal. Well, obviously, when when uh, you win a faceoff or give yourself an opportunity um, off of that, you know. I, the, it's a hard-working goal. We talk about finding soft spots, and freshmen's in there. That line continues to work hard every time they're on the ice, and that gives them opportunities. And so, you know, uh, when they can pitch in and, and score a goal, it definitely helps us. 3 nothing Brookings at this point, and Bomashad, the team leader in points, picks up a goal on a nice little drop pass from Zach Galinke, uh, beating Shortridge. Bo, I mean, he's having one phenomenal year, and Zach's right behind him, and uh, those two Skating together on Friday night, what would you think? Well, I mean, Glinky has the skill sets to, to create some space. So, you know, he uh, takes the puck into the zone and then cuts across the middle. So they're D step up. And, and you know, both trails in behind him and, and picks up the puck off a nice drop pass and, and you know, makes a really nice shot to beat Shortridge. So it's, it's, uh, it's always nice when your, your goal scorers continue to score goals. Joe Nathy capping off the scoring Friday night. Power play just had expired as they were bringing the puck up the ice. Bo Machad had it on the left side, I believe left hash, and then found Joe Nathy wide open in the slot once again, and he beat Shortridge to uh, cap off the scoring. Tell us about Joe's goal. Well, we talk about our defensemen getting up ice all the time, and, and uh, you know Joe uh, likes to be in the play as much as he can. And, you know, we also talk about one time in the puck, and it was a great play. Comes up one times it through the middle, quick shot, low, and uh, and beat him. So it's always nice when the defenseman can pitch in. Blomashad picking up the assist on that. He ended the night with two points. Zach Linky had three points. Uh, Joe Anderson not on the score sheet on Friday night, but uh, that line really looked spectacular. What did you think, uh, Joe Anderson, Blomashad, and Zach Linky? Well, obviously, when, when you have guys that get two and three points, it's a pretty good night and not get scored on again. So they, they should be one of the top lines. They're all 20-year-olds, and, and we expect a lot from them. Yeah, I mean, even from, like, one end of the ice to the other end, or the board to board, I mean, they were flying all over. You talked about the face-offs and winning the 50-50 pucks uh, before the game. You had to have been pleased with the team, huh? Well, whenever you get a shout out and, and a win, it's always a, a good team effort. And so, you know, obviously we were excited and first shout out of the year for us. And so we obviously we were super excited and plus to beat a team like the Aberdeen Wings that have such a good coached and, and playing hard team, it's always nice. Brian Kubik, big, uh, one of the big reasons for that shutout, his first game as a Brookings Blizzard coming from the WHL in uh, St. Andrew, Manitoba, stopping all 23 shots. Tell us about Ryan's play. Well, Ryan, obviously, is a kid that we just picked up. And, you know, he's a young 98, or, you know, he's in a 98 birth year. And, um, you know, he came in before the 17 series that he went and, and represented Team Canada with. And he came in and just did everything we asked. He works hard on and off the ice. And it showed on the, you know, in, in the game. He, he put every puck that was on, on him. He either put it into the corner where we have an opportunity to go get it, or he put it right out of the rink, which is great because then you know you have a face off and it's another set play. So we were really happy with what he did, and, and we were happy for him. So a great win Friday night, 5 nothing over the Aberdeen Wings. Big crowd on hand. Everybody went home happy. Saturday night, Brookings travels to Aberdeen to complete that home-and-home -home weekend series. Uh, started out great. Eddie Eads, a minute 59 into the game, right off the draw, right point, blasted one past Chad Katz. Uh, great start on the road. That's what you want, correct? Yeah, I mean, like I said, we always want to try to score the first goal just like every other team, and, and especially you know when you score a face-off goal, it's huge. I think it's uh, 
you know, it's a huge boost when, when you know that you have a chance 50-50 and, and you win that 50%. It's always nice. So we were super excited to get on the board early. Talking about Saturday night's game against the Aberdeen Wings. Uh, quick start, up one nothing. Then it went back and forth throughout that first period. And, uh, I mean, you thought, like, maybe, hey, we're picking up right where we left off on Friday. But uh, Aberdeen gets a late goal. Um, open puck in the slot. Put... Uh, their player put one under the bar, I believe. Um, I forgot who scored for Aberdeen, but uh, might have been uh, Swingle, I believe it was. Austin Swingle scoring for the Wings. But, uh, yeah, put it under the bar at the last minute of that first period. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, you know, obviously we can't afford to leave any of their players open in the slot area, and that's something that we try to work on every day in practice. And, you know, mistakes are what have hurt us in the past. And in once again, we leave a guy open in front of the net, and, and he uh, he puts a bar down. So 1-1 one, one after a period, Aberdeen comes out and jumps up 3-1 to one as they score twice in the first, I believe, five minutes of that second period. And now you're thinking, uh-oh, we need, you need a response. What, uh, I mean, a timeout wasn't called, but uh, what were you thinking about your team? Well, I mean, obviously we, we knew that uh, – you know, Aberdeen's a tough place to play. It's a good team. They have a great crowd that backs them. And and so, obviously, we needed to get back to what we were doing the night before and early on in the game. And so we, uh, you know, we, we continued to have little conversations on the bench of what we needed to do. And, and uh, you know, we started to push back a little. And that line of Zach Linke, Bo Machad and Joe Anderson came through in that second period, down 3-1. Joe Anderson took a nice pass from Bo Machad and buried one from the slot. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, another play where off the line rush, we're having a rush, they'd make a drop pass and, and just another really good shot. We continued to, you know, get drive the net and, and try to create some space for some other late guys coming in. And the puck was actually picked off at center ice right in front of the bench by uh, one of your defensemen. And, um, I mean, that really set up the play. So, I mean, great, great work in the neutral zone for the Blizzard to uh, pull, with them, in, pull the, them within a goal at 3-2. to two. And that's how the second period ended. Uh, third period, couldn't start any better. Two quick goals. Uh, Joe Anderson got his second of the game. Um, tying the game at three. Joe had one heck of a weekend, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, he... he Last year, you know, playing in Alexandria, you know, he, he, he was, had some time here as well. Um, you know, he's a goal scorer. He had 70 points or something like that. He's a kid that, you know, you want to have him shooting the puck and obviously playing with the other two guys that are leading the team right now. It's, they were very effective all weekend, and, and we were happy to see that. Bowen Shad picking up another assist on that one. And then just a minute later, Brookings had just tied the game at uh, – at three, and then Connor Hutchins picked up the puck in his own zone, threw the neutral zone, cut to the slot, and buries one. I was just saying on the air, I was like, if there's one Blizzard player that deserves a goal, it's Connor Hutchins with all his near misses and, uh, you know, just getting robbed left and right in Bismarck the last few games uh, before the Aberdeen series. Uh, what would you think of Connor's goal? Well, you know, it all cre was created off the rush. We uh, continued to drive the net and, and create some extra space. And so by our guy in the center of the ice driving the net, um, creates space for our guys to, to get to the middle and shoot. And Connor shoots it as good as anybody. And so it was nice to see him snap one home. Brookings up 4-3 to three at this point. And you head down the stretch. I mean, it stayed 4-3. But the... Evil hockey gods, I'll say, reared their ugly head. And uh, with about 50 seconds left, uh, defensive zone faceoff, faceoff you won, uh, turnover down the open guy in the slot, and Austin or Aberdeen able to tie the game. Um, just a, a tough little, tough little breakdown in the defensive zone. Yeah, I mean that's that same situation where we talk about those 50-50 pucks, the faceoff goals, either get you super high or they can, you know, they can punish you as well. And the hard part about that goal is is that we won the draw and we have it on our tape and, and both defensemen kind of whack at it and it goes right to a guy that's in front of the net to bury it. And, you know, at the same time, you know, it's, it's something that should never happen, but it did. And, and uh, you know, we continued to, uh, to try to push forward throughout the, you know, the overtime. Yeah, so the game goes overtime. You did have chances to win it. Uh, Victor Lindell had a beautiful chance, open in the slot, just didn't happen, just couldn't find any any of the magic in the overtime and the shootout. Well, I mean, that, that's probably a guy that we'd like to have uh, the puck on his tape, and, and it was a great one-timer 
you know, and, and Aberdeen's goalie made a huge save on it to give them an opportunity, and obviously they ended up carrying that right into the shootout. Yeah, so Brookings falls in a shootout 5-4, to four, but hey, let's look at the bright side over the weekend. Uh, you get three points, um, able to climb a little bit in the standings. You gain a point on the Aberdeen wings. Uh, you're just a point behind Bismarck. Um, and you just have, I'm sure you, get, you just got to learn from those uh, experiences how to close those games out, correct? Yeah, you know, I mean, those, uh, if you look at the majority of our overtime, you know, shootout losses, we had the lead in most of those games. So that's something that we need to continue to work on. And, and hopefully we can get in situations where we, uh, we can hold the lead late in the game. I want to talk about Joe Anderson a little more, though. But, uh, you know, I was saying how he's all over the ice on Friday night. He ended up plus four on the weekend. Um, let's talk about that, that line, too, that you put together for the first time this year. Um, how happy were you with their play, Bo Mashad, Zach Linke, and Joe Anderson? Well, like I said, they're a group of 20-year-olds, and we expect uh, them to be the best kids on the ice every night. And, you know, for us to win games, we need them to be the leaders and, and score goals. And, we expect that from them. So it's uh, for us, it's no surprise. And now the thing is for them is they need to do it every game. And uh, one more point I wanted to bring up. Uh, we talked about we touched on it last weekend, uh, the penalty kill. You, didn't, you went through another weekend without giving up a power play goal. Uh, how do you think of your PK lately? Well, we're starting to get better pressure um, on the puck carrier. And, and also, we're, we're getting better at the neutral zone, where we're, teams are having more and more trouble getting in the zone on us. And so we're going to continue to practice that. And you know, you win championships with really good PK. And so that's something that you know, we want to focus on and continue to get better every week. And, and so we're, we are excited not to get scored on. And hopefully, we can continue. Sounds good. So Brookings ended up a win and a shootout loss over the Aberdeen Wings. They do gain a point on the Wings looking at the standings. They're uh, just a point behind Bismarck, who they'll take on Wednesday night. We'll talk about that game real briefly uh, coming up here. Um, looking up at Minot, Minot's in first place of the Central Division, two points ahead of the Austin Bruins. And Aberdeen is in third place with 26 points, three points behind Minot. So six points out of third place. Uh, just one point out of fourth place, though. Um, you know, lot, lots of hockey left, and um, hopefully you can build off this past weekend and uh, going forward here. Let's talk about Bismarck real quick. They come to town. You just went two and three against them in a five-game series. Um, pretty familiar with them, I'd say. Uh, what can you tell us about the game on Wednesday night? Well, they're a hard-working team, and they're going to continue to come in and and work hard and, and they're well coached so we know that we have to come in and be ready to go right from the start and you know we have to play 60 minutes instead of 59 at this point right now and so um, every little mistake that we've made in the last couple games have cost us and so um, we'll be ready for them and they're going to be ready for us and so it should be a good you know interdivision game. Yeah, it was a crazy weekend. Minot was taking on Bismarck. You guys took on Aberdeen. You wipe out Aberdeen Friday night, come back, close game, shootout loss. Bismarck and Minot played each other. Minot beat Bismarck 7 to nothing Friday night, and then Bismarck comes back and beats Minot 5 to 4. So, I mean, this is a is a crazy central division should be a great year. Yeah, everybody seems to be beating everybody and and obviously we haven't had an opportunity to play Austin yet. Um and uh, you know we won't play them till January, but we're going to keep plugging away, and, and uh, hopefully in the end, you know our, our goal is still the same. We want to make the playoffs, so we're going to keep plugging away every day. Sounds good, Coach. Well, appreciate your time here, and uh, good luck Wednesday night. Thanks for having me.